Today is Thursday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time. First reading. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a burnt offering on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac, and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the burnt offering, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham, Father. He said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the burnt offering. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next he tied up his son Isaac, and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Ureh, hence people now say, On the mountain the Lord will see. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing, all this because you obeyed my command. Abraham then returned to his servants, and they set out together for Beersheba, where Abraham made his home. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. Not to us, O Lord, not to us but to your name give glory because of your kindness, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, Where is their God? I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. Our God is in heaven, whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. They have mouths but speak not, they have eyes but see not, they have ears but hear not, they have noses but smell not. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. Their makers shall be like them, everyone who trusts in them. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. Gospel Reading Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 to 8 After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there, people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking, and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins he then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowd saw this they were struck with awe and glorified God who had given such authority to men. The Gospel of the Lord 
Jesus and Israel's Faith in the One God and Savior. From the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraphs 587-591. If the law in the Jerusalem Temple could be occasions of opposition to Jesus by Israel's religious authorities, His role in the redemption of sins, the divine work par excellence, was the true stumbling block for them. Jesus scandalized the Pharisees by eating with tax collectors and sinners as familiarly as with themselves. Against those among them who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others, Jesus affirmed, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He went further by proclaiming before the Pharisees that, since sin is universal, those who pretend not to need salvation are blind to themselves. Jesus gave scandal above all when he identified his merciful conduct toward sinners with God's own attitude toward them. He went so far as to hint that by sharing the table of sinners he was admitting them to the messianic banquet. But it was most especially by forgiving sins that Jesus placed the religious authorities of Israel on the horns of a dilemma. Were they not entitled to demand in consternation, who can forgive sins but God alone? By forgiving sins Jesus either is blaspheming as a man who made himself God's equal, or is speaking the truth and his person really does make present and reveal God's name. Only the divine identity of Jesus' person can justify so absolute a claim as he who is not with me is against me, and his saying that there was in him something greater than Jonah. Greater than Solomon, something greater than the temple, his reminder that David had called the Messiah his Lord, and his affirmations, before Abraham was, I am, and even I and the Father are one. Jesus asked the religious authorities of Jerusalem to believe in him because of the Father's works which he accomplished. But such an act of faith must go through a mysterious death to self, for a new birth from above under the influence of divine grace. Such a demand for conversion in the face of so surprising a fulfillment of the promises allows one to understand the Sanhedrin's tragic misunderstanding of Jesus, they judged that he deserved the death sentence as a blasphemer. The members of the Sanhedrin were thus acting at the same time out of ignorance and the hardness of their unbelief.